In 2010, Hank and John Green created VidCon, a video convention. It only had 1,400 people in attendance. I decided to go to VidCon myself to get to know the venue and see what VidCon is really about. From 2010 all the way to 2023, this is the history of VidCon. In this video, we're gonna answer any questions you could have about the history of VidCon. Is it for little kids or YouTubers or everyone? Did it get better or worse over the years? Who the hell are the Vlog Brothers? And more. Let's start with VidCon number one, 2010. The inaugural event was held at the Hyatt Regency Century Plaza Hotel in Los Angeles, selling out in advance to the pleasure of Hank Green, who said, in the first six hours, only two people bought tickets. I had a document saying I would sell out 2,400 hotel nights during the conference. If I didn't, I would have to go bankrupt. Personally, bankrupt. But let's pause for a second. Who is that? Hank and John Green, the Vlog Brothers, are American authors, educators, and YouTube vloggers who co-founded Crash Course and SciShow. John Green is an acclaimed author of young adult novels like The Fault in Our Stars and Looking for Alaska, while Hank Green is an entrepreneur and science communicator. These talented brothers posted their first video in 2007. The channel began as a part of the project Brotherhood 2.0, in which the two pledged to cease all text-based communication for a year. Hello John, by now you will have received my message that we will no longer be communicating through any textual means. No more instant messaging, no more emailing only video blogging and possibly phone calls. You can see my eye in my eye. After growing multiple channels to millions of subscribers, they decided to start their next endeavor. And that brings us back to VidCon 2010. Luckily, the spirit of the event was to vlog, so we have lots of footage to look through. The first VidCon started with excited attendees getting gift bags and putting on their lanyards before an opening speech from the Vlog Brothers themselves. There are a lot of people who are mediating this experience through video. <laughs> I see a lot of red dots. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. There was also musical performances like Rhett and Link and whatever this is. This actually kind of slaps. It's got like a 100 Gex vibe to it way before Gex ever made a song. The people on stage look like they're having a genuinely good time as well. There were tons of legendary creators at the first VidCon, like Philly D, Ryan Higa, and Shane Dawson, oof. It also looks like in the first couple VidCons, you really could just meet any creator you wanted by just walking around. In this video, these girls got to meet Tayzon Day, the chocolate rain guy. Chocolate rain, some stay dry and others feel the pain. So they could pretty much meet any creator they wanted by just walking around a bit and asking. Since the whole convention took place in a 100 thousand square foot area compared to the 1.8 million square foot Anaheim Convention Center that they would later move to. There were also these ball pits that are just kiddie pools filled with plastic balls. This was for some reason a staple of any convention at the time, like the infamous Dashcon ball pit that looked like this. Anyway, that's pretty much all the events of the first VidCon, but we're gonna come back to it when we compare it to the present. 2011. For the 2011 VidCon, it's a little harder to find info on for some reason. They have this website that's still up to this day with only some of the links working and some of them bringing you to the VidCon YouTube channel. But we do know they had some even more famous creators this year, like Smosh and Fred, two huge creators at the time, with Fred being the first YouTuber to ever reach a million subscribers and Smosh being one of the most successful channels on the site. They also had musical performances by the Gregory Brothers who make all those parody songs. And even Watsky, the pale white kid that raps fast. 2012. So in 2012, they changed venues to the Anaheim Convention Center, which like I mentioned before, is way bigger than the last venue. They more than doubled their attendance from the prior year, going from 2,500 to 7,000 attendees. All the backstage interviews were done by SourceFed, which is pretty cool. In terms of guests, you had people like Jenna Marbles and Annoying Orange. Terry Crews was there for some reason. Also, the 2012 event further expanded its industry track, which catered to creators, marketers, and platform developers. 2013. 2013 has guests like the band Pentatonix and Toby Turner, oof. There was a ball pit again, thank God. And Epic Rap Battles of History had Obama go against Mitt Romney live on stage, so that was pretty cool. I'm the head of state. You're like a head of cabbage. About to get smacked by my 
my stimulus package. It seems like this might be one of the last years you could just walk right up to creators you wanted to meet. They implemented this system eventually where you have to register like a month before VidCon to do a meet and greet with anyone you want to see, but at the same time you mostly guarantee yourself a spot to see them, so maybe it's not too bad. 2014. 2014, we're up to 18,000 attendees. This year, YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki made her first VidCon appearance, delivering a keynote in which she announced new features and stuff for creators. Also, Vsauce was there and Freddie Wong. Not really any other standout creators this year. 2015. 2015 had a much bigger focus on social issues with the use of hashtags like hashtag women at VidCon. It also featured people like Casey Neistat, one of the biggest vloggers to ever live and a musical performance by Miranda Sings. Oof. 2016. 2016 had 26,000 attendees, so it's still growing every year. The creators have officially changed from the older YouTube era, with people like Markiplier and Jaden Animations being there. It also feels like this year was a major shift in attendees' age. Like back in 2010, it's mostly folks in their late teens to late 30s. From 2016 all the way up to 2023, it seems to be more filled with mostly teens and children. They also announced VidCon Europe that would be held in Amsterdam in April of 2017. 2017. It seemed like the production quality was increased a lot. Grace Vanderwall did an amazing performance with like a broken arm. There was also a ton of stuff that had nothing to do with videos though, like Jason Derulo had a way too long performance. And there was a Musical.ly panel, which is the app that later turned into TikTok. To me this is pretty significant because it's just a small look into the future of VidCon, where TikTok is just as big if not bigger than YouTube. 2018. In 2018, Viacom bought the rights to VidCon. There was a record 75,000 people in attendance with creators like David Dobrik and Emma Chamberlain there. 2019. 2019 marked a decade of doing VidCon. Creators like Liza Koshy and the Try Guys were there, along with people famous for vertical videos, like Zach King. TikTok was getting popular at this point, so obviously a huge shift was coming with YouTube possibly being dethroned from being the top dog when it comes to silly internet videos. 2020. VidCon 2020 was originally scheduled to take place in June in Anaheim as it traditionally does. However, due to the global pandemic, the in-person event was canceled. VidCon opted to go digital with VidCon Now. This was an online experience that spanned several months, starting from June 2020. VidCon Now was just a bunch of free content performances, panels, Q&A sessions, interactive experiences, and meet and greets. You had people like Mark Rober, the D'Amelio sisters, and James Charles, oof. 2021. In 2021, they didn't really do anything. 2022. VidCon was back in person. There was a good turnout of 50,000 people. Hank Green got COVID, but recovered. Mr. Beast had a super packed panel they had to turn like hundreds of people away from about the YouTube algorithm. And I think this is the first time I barely know any of the creators that are featured. That could be because I'm in my 20s now, or because I don't watch TikTok, but I'm not sure. What's changed? VidCon started in a hotel run by a small team and featured huge internet icons of the early YouTube days. Over a decade later, it's in a massive convention center and seems to be less focused on YouTubers and more on brands. It seems like in the early VidCon days, you could not only meet a creator you love, but maybe even get to know them or share a meal with them. At a modern VidCon, you have to fill out a form a month before the event just to get a chance to see them. On the flip side, way more people get the opportunity to go, like 75,000 people instead of 1,400. Also, VidCon has expanded to Abu Dhabi, Baltimore, Mexico, and Sao Paulo, giving way more people opportunities to attend. 2023. I got to attend VidCon 2023, and I was really excited about it at first. I'd heard about VidCon since I was a 13 year old, and I would have possibly cried just at the sight of the chocolate rain guy that I mentioned earlier. I was then slightly disappointed that there wasn't really any of those YouTubers coming this year, but I did get to see a couple cool panels, like John Green in The Flesh, one of the men who started it all. And I also really enjoy seeing how happy these kids are getting to see their favorite creators, and passing off the torch in some way. I can't say I would wait in a line this long for many things. These kids are really dedicated. I got to interview Nick Lamau, he was pretty cool. Ultimately, if a creator you love is coming to VidCon, I think you're still gonna have a really good time. Hang out with like-minded fans, possibly learn something from a panel, and make some friends. That's what videos are really about. Thanks so much for watching everybody. If you like this video, please share it with somebody who likes really old YouTube videos. I've been Caleb, I'll see you next time.